Uh, we're going to talk about making our kicks sit better in the mix. Part two. We're doing part two here. So I did a video where I talked about how to make your kicks sit better in the mix. I left out some things like EQ though, so we're going to talk about that today. All right, so I'm going to solo the sample and the drums here. That way we can hear this more clearly. I like to do subtractive EQ. That's probably the most important thing. All right, so I'm going to show you guys with it and without it. So without it first. So here's the sample and the drums without the subtractive EQs. All right, so it's cutting through it, but it's cutting through it due to the volume. It's not cutting through it due to like anything I did with the EQs and whatnot. And we're trying to change that here because you can kind of hear a little bit of clashing in the low range, in my opinion, like maybe around like 200 hertz or so. So in order to fix that, I made a subtractive EQ here. The key of the song is an F. Uh, this is the sample here, and I'm gonna be cutting room for the kick. So what I did is I made a bunch of points where F is, so that's the key of the song. Uh, I've made some points, so the 20 hertz, 40 hertz, 80 hertz, 170 hertz. Now, the first thing we can do to clean this up is we can do some subtractive EQ like this. You can just do it like that. That'd be the easiest way to make sure that kick cuts through, just like this. You can also set up the analyzer to take the sidechain input so you can see the kick coming into Fab Filter. That's also great because it'll help you identify where the frequencies are. So in order to do that, so there should be no sidechain input, and then you're gonna make it say kick or whatever your uh, whatever your sidechaining, you know. All right. And if the analyzer is selected sidechain, you should be able to see both of them playing at the same time. So as you can see, we can see the kick as well as the sample playing here in the analyzer. It sounds pretty clean to me, but one way we can make this sound actually better, so we're gonna put the gain to zero. And we're going to turn down the dynamic range to about where it was earlier, about one or so, one, one decibel. And then you're going to see this thing here. You're going to open it up. It says auto. And then you're going to turn on this, this button right here. It turns on the side chain ducking. So you turn that on and you're going to have to take the threshold a little bit. But basically what it's going to do, is it's going to allow the EQs to be ducked by the kick. So let's turn it on now. As you can see, the, the EQ is now responding to the kick, which is great because it, we don't have to have this EQ happening while the kick isn't playing now. So it'll be a lot more full sounding in the meantime. Let me bring down the threshold a little bit, kind of play with the settings a little bit. Like it about there. Now essentially, I did the exact same thing here, but with the snare and the hi-hats. Um, I'm a little bit questionable about, why, about whether or not you should do the dynamic EQ with the hi-hats. I kind of feel like it's too much. It's kind of too much. It's fine with the snare, though, but with the hi-hats, it's a little bit too much. So I try to just catch the snare area. So I did the exact same thing here, but uh, higher up. So 1,000 through 400 or so, uh, 2,800, and then 5,000. Those are the hertz ranges here. I'm not going to show you guys how to set it up again, because... It wastes time. Basically, the exact same thing here. I have the side chain, do the snare, set it up the exact same way, so it's ducking. See how it ducks when the snare hits? Yeah, it makes the snare cut through the mix a little bit better. Yeah, really good in my opinion, really good. So we're uh, learning about kicks now, but yeah. You can also do that with your snare as well. Some other things you can do with your kick. So you could try compressing it more as well. I'm not really a big fan of this, just because like, Compressed kicks, I don't know, man. It just depends. It really just depends, in my opinion. Because sometimes it can sound good, and sometimes it can sound bad. More so, I'm a fan of parallel compression, like I mentioned in the other video. So that's probably my go-to with compression on kicks. Okay, so we're going to say you have all your room cut out already within the sample or melody for the drums. So that's good. Next, we're going to talk about side-chaining the kick and the bass together. That's, uh, yeah, you're going to need to do this in order to make it sit well in the mix. Kenny Beats may be this person going around telling people, hey, don't sidechain your kicks to your 808s. No. No. You're wrong, Kenny Beats. You're wrong. It sounds good, and it just depends how much you do it. Like, sometimes you're going to want to do it a lot, and sometimes you're going to want to do it a little bit. Uh, what I like to do is I'll solo just the, the drums and the 808s sometimes when I'm setting it. All right, so I put a compressor on the bass, and I'm going to have the kick trigger it. So that's the plan here. So we're gonna open this up here, click that button, click sidechain, click kick. Then we're gonna switch to RMS mode. You can do peak or RMS mode. I generally find I like RMS mode more though. And then you're gonna click this button down here 
it's like a little slope and the reason why you do that is so you can see the look ahead here in my opinion the look ahead is really crucial for setting your side chain all right now we're going to play with the settings a little bit maybe drop on the threshold a little bit and start playing the attack and release so i'd never once i set the threshold i leave the threshold there because once you move the threshold it fucks up all your settings that's probably like the most the most crucial thing to not move when you're setting a compressor because if you change the threshold it, it changes how the attack and release behave which will therefore just change the way the entire compressor behaves so yeah once i set like a area for my threshold i stay there I like rod there now the reason why i just do the bass and drums here is because it's it should be a little bit easier to hear when it's ducking and whatnot we don't have all these extra things playing you may even want to try putting on a metronome sometimes i do that as well maybe throw it up to 16. You know? That's good. So what we're trying to do here is we're trying to make sure there's not an overload of low frequencies because when you have a kick and 808 playing at the same time, there's going to be a lot of low frequencies playing at once. Just do the math here. So by having a duck and just having a duck real quick every time the 808 hits, we're making that room for that kick and it'll just be much cleaner sounding. It won't, it'll be much easier for us to master it and not worry about, you know, hitting the peak really hard. Okay, so we can kind of set the ratio here now. That's probably the one thing that's like, you can move that however you want. It's basically just how much it ducks. So we can put it all the way if we wanted to. It's like a, like a complete ducking sound. Or something more subtle. Or maybe like two or something like that. Alright, so that's, uh, yeah. Side chain to kick to the bass. Pretty easy in my opinion. You can also play with the dry wet knob if you want as well. But I'm not a big fan of that with this. I feel like it's better just to do a, like a nice clean, a nice clean side chain. Um, that might be all I got for today actually. Um, have a good one, guys. Good bang, incorporated.